You might know everything I'm going to do, but that's not going to help you since I know everything you're going to do. Strange, isn't it? <laughs> I still love that line. Sonic and animations are no strangers to each other. As a child, I grew up watching the adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog and Sonic Sat AM. And vaguely do I remember watching Sonic Underground, but that's for another day. Meanwhile in Japan, around the time Sonic Jam came out, there was a two-part OVA release based off of Sonic the Hedgehog. Journey to Eggman Land and Sonic vs. Metal Sonic, respectively. In 1999, before Sonic Adventure was released, the OVA was dubbed in English by ADV Films. Instead of releasing it as two episodes, they combined it into one feature-length film. And thus we have Sonic the Hedgehog the movie. I remember loving this film a lot as a kid because, I mean, it's Sonic in an anime. What more could you want? But does it hold up well today? Grab your tails and scrape your knuckles. Let's take a look. The OVA begins with Dr. Robotnik making plans to complete Metal Sonic and, well, that's kind of it. Meanwhile on South Island, Sonic and Tails are having a day off or something like that. While Old Man Al is in danger of crashing, so of course Sonic and Tails comes to his rescue. Count me out. You're the one who can fly. You do something. Or just Tails. Eventually Sonic decides to do something go to Sonic CD opening to save Tails and Old Man Al. Here we find out that Old Man Al was sent by the president to retrieve Sonic and Tails. So they fly off, in style, to the president's palace. But oh no! It's a trap by Robotnik. Well actually, Robotnik is using the president and Sarah, you know, everyone's favorite Sonic characters, as bait. So Sonic can save Robotropolis from some new tyrant called Metal Robotnik, who's planning to use the robot generator to destroy Planet Freedom or something like that. I think they believe him. So Sonic and Tails goes along with this, and after getting the Deo Ex Machina, I mean, the Navigator, they travel to the land of darkness where Robotropolis is at. Gotcha! <laughs> Okay. Meanwhile, Sonic and Tails enter a vortex that takes them to the land of darkness, all well, after a pretty cool looking running scene and fighting against some Sonic 1 badniks. They hit a warp zone that takes them to the outskirts of Robotropolis, in not New York City. And on their merry way to Robotropolis, they encounter Metal Robotnik and make a complete fool out of him. Of course he takes this pretty well. Sonic and Tails are cornered and Metal Robotnik shoots them with everything he's got. Gee, what a surprise, they're still alive. As they sneak away, it turns out Metal Robotnik was not fooled by any of that, and he tries to shoot them down with his... What is he shooting? Tails gets caught up in his gooey stuff, and Sonic really being good at swimming is about to drown. Well, looks like it's game over for the... Oh wow, look, it's Knuckles! Who is, for some reason, wearing a hat. Huh. And before somebody says something about it, yes, I'm aware in the comics he got a hat from his grandfather Hawkins, but this OVA takes place way before that happened. So the trio does the Sonic Overdrive to defeat Metal Robotnik, and it turns out it was Sarah and Robotnik piloting it. How did they survive all that is beyond me. The trio finds Robotropolis and make their way- HOLY CRAP! Knuckles can fly?! Well, time is running out for the robot generator, and Sonic is able to jump on the handle at the last second, even though the last shot shows he couldn't. And then Sonic gets his DNA copy, I guess to finish the creation of Metal Sonic. The Hyper Metal Sonic! Yeah, I'm sticking with just Metal Sonic. No, oh, no! Metal Robotnik is back! Or not. It just broke apart! Sarah reveals that Metal Robotnik and the Generator was all part of Robotnik's plan. Everything that everyone knew already. So what about this plot, Robotnik? Yeah, Robotnik, I thought I could trust you! Robotnik then sends Metal Sonic to fight against Sonic, and being her hero, he gets his blue behind handed to him. Meanwhile, back at Sonic and Tails' home, Old Man Al is chilling under the moon when suddenly Metal appears and apparently something happens to him. What are you doing? Stop! 
Suspense! Eventually, Knuckles and Tails retreat to South Island to find a way to save Sonic and- Oh! So he is okay. Then, what was with the creepy close-up in that last scene? Those are Sonic's favorite clothes! What?! Besides gloves and sneakers, when did Sonic ever wear clothing? Not to mention a pink shirt! I guess Super Saiyans weren't the only thing that inspires Sonic out of DBZ. Elsewhere, Metal Sonic destroys some cities in the land of the sky, and Sonic wakes up in the middle of somewhere, and for some reason is able to tell what Metal is doing. Meanwhile, back at their home, Tails is fixing the navigator to locate Metal Sonic somehow, and Knuckles argue that they should be trying to find Sonic, but Tails counter argues by saying if they can pinpoint where Metal Sonic is, they can find where Sonic is. Wait a second. According to Tails, the reason why Sonic is able to see Metal Sonic destroying the cities in his mind is apparently due to the fact that when Sonic was scanned, not only did the data give Metal Sonic his strengths, his weaknesses, and his memories, but it somehow linked their minds together. In other words, they're like identical twins. Okay, I never try to clone anything or make an evil duplicate of someone, but I'm pretty sure that's not how it works. Yes, it is possible to implant memories into a clone from the original, which explains why Metal Sonic knew where Sonic's home was and why he's attacked in certain cities. But unless they were born together or psychic, there's no way they can see what the other one sees or feel what the other one feels. Basically, this explanation is stupid. Anyway, the president calls Sonic and Tails home after seeing what looks like Sonic attacking the land of the sky, and there he gets all the information we knew about and some extra information to go with it. The land of the sky is held together by a huge glacier which joins the continents. Beneath the continents lie rivers of magma that spread all over the planet like blood vessels. If the tip of the glacier was punctured by an explosion, the magma would rush to the surface, melting all the ice. The very backbone of our planet freedom would be shattered. Sonic also gets this information and the race begins to save the glaciers. Be quiet, buckle up, and hang on, we're hitting a warp zone! Oh, that's right, they're in this movie too. So after Sonic was defeated by Metal Sonic earlier, Robotnik makes plans to marry Sarah after the land of the sky is destroyed or something stupid like that. Whatever. Metal begins to lay siege to the glaciers and Sonic arrives in time to stop him from causing more damage. After some exchanges are made, it's decided that this will not be an exhibition match, but a battle to the death. Some stuff happens, like Metal crashes into Robotnik's ship, Knuckles saves Sarah, Tails saves Sonic by using the Navigator to overload Metal Sonic- WITH SCIENCE, OF COURSE! The battle actually causes more damage to the glaciers as Knuckles, now with the power of boners, is able to stop the magma, but at the cost of its cool hat. Who can say where the road goes, where the day then the match is about to end as Metal is damaged beyond belief, but Sonic, being a nice guy, I guess, decides to save the Doomsday Causing Machine. Only for Metal to say, There is only one Sonic. There can be only one. After all that, the land of the sky is saved, Sonic gets sad, and Robotnik decides to do something again. Never mind. So as I said, the day is saved and everybody is happy. So Sonic the Hedgehog the movie is actually a pretty fun watch. The English dub to this is rather cheesy. It kind of adds to the charm of it. While the story itself is merely okay at best, it actually feels faithful to the source material. Unlike a bunch of other adaptations of video games I've seen. As for the characters, there's Sonic, there's Tails, there's Knuckles, and Dr. Robotnik. You know, characters we all know and love, but the President and Sarah really didn't do it for me. They really don't add much to the story. In fact, you could have just called the character Amy Rose and gave her a dad, and nothing really would have changed. I heard the OVA was supposed to branch out into his own series, but unfortunately it was never picked up beyond two episodes, which is a shame because I would have liked to see how this would have played out as a series. It wasn't until years later where he finally got a Sonic anime in the form of Sonic X, and that was okay, I guess. The soundtrack to this OVA is amazing too. Especially with the main song lookalike being very addicting. Oh, I don't know what this lady is singing about. Overall, it's something I recommend watching if you're strictly a Sonic fan or you love OVAs from the 90s. Though if you want to go for a physical copy of it, you better own a VHS player still because the DVD can cost up to an arm and a leg for it. 
Why? I don't know. But if you really want to watch it, I recommend watching it on YouTube right now because while it's good, it's not worth $50 to $300. Well, that felt pretty good doing an anime review. I should probably do it again sometime. In the meantime, thank you guys for watching. Hope to catch you soon. Ice and water, steak and cow, autumn this year and last year.